So this is going to be a working session. We will uh, show how to spin up two kind of uh, containers, one with Next.js and the other one with Drupal, and everything is going to be like magic, everything connected. You've seen, and that's a disclaimer, this is going to be using Pantheon infrastructure. This is something that is already available. You just need to request access to it. But before we start, Hey, sir. <laughs> One second. More people coming. Okay. Why is this thing up? Why is this thing up? Okay, don't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so, before we start, uh, as you can see on the haircut, my name is Alex Moreno, I'm the one on the left. I am developer advocate uh, for Pantheon. I've been working in the Drupal industry for, I don't know how many years now, like 15 long, 16, 17, something like that. I started my career in Drupal and I've been trying to get off the island, but for some reason I've always been gravitating around this and actually having fun, so I'm very happy that um, my career has gone in that direction. I've worked for obviously Pantheon at the moment, I've worked for Akia for five years as technical architect. I've worked with um, massive organizations like Big Pharma, like uh, companies that we all know, so I've been really, uh, sorry, like, like really grateful for you know having that experience. I work at BBC and Capgemini, so yeah, a lot of big brands, so very, very interesting. Um, and my friend here. Okay, so my name is uh, Julian Madero. I am the one on the right, as you can see. <laughs> we are very similar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have been working with Rupert uh, also for more than 15, 16 years, something like that. Now I'm working as an engineer manager, a senior group architect in, in Iberus, and I come from Spain. I come from Zaragoza. It's a, a medium city in the north in, in Spain. And uh, I have been doing, I think, not anything in, about Drupal from, from then uh, back in now the carpet. Uh, I think that uh, I have been working uh, in, uh, in, in all aspects. And I also have been uh, working uh, with uh, events, organizing events uh, around Drupal uh, in Spain, for example, uh, the last year Drupal camp in Delhi. Okay, so. Uh, it's our first talk in North America. I've been, actually, I've been giving this workshop in several parts in Europe. I was doing a tour in December, so I'm super excited to be in Florida, especially now that it's super cold in Madrid. Um, and especially in my first session in North America, so thanks for, thanks for coming. Just to make sure, I will repeat again, this is a working session, so you will need your laptop in order to follow along. You are welcome to stay if you don't have your laptop, but it will be a, maybe a bit boring. It's going to be two like sessions, we will have the lunch in the middle. And we will introduce a little bit about us very quickly, the problem that we are going to, or we are trying to solve and how we solve it in, in Pantheon. And we will have the, the play time, that it's going to be like 60, 80% of the time, uh, playing with uh, the tools and I will give you access to, to the platform and you will be able to, to follow along. The goal is understanding how to set up Next.js and Drupal in the cloud. Again, it's, it will take working time, minutes while you are waiting for something to happen. You will see, see that. And the idea is that you will take home at the couple site next year, connected to Drupal. Um, potentially a preview as well. It's a tool that I will, I will show you. And the goal, what is not going to be a goal, is to learn next year. I will show you how to, again, work with next year. And if we have time, we will deploy a change, and we will see how it interacts and how uh, it builds the artifact and everything on, on production or on our fictitious fi production. But the goal is not to learn next year's year. Um, you need Chrome or any modern browser. If you want to store this locally, you can as well with DDF or Rando. And yeah, just have, have fun. Who knows? Who 
who knows Pantheon? Apart of, you know, it's uh, the sponsor, but who knows that Pantheon is a hosting company? Okay. Who knows that Pantheon is not a hosting company? <laughs> <laughs> So we, are, we actually uh, are more focused on the tools around the teams, like what you see there, like upstreams, autopilot, multi-dev. And our goal is not just hosting a website, but giving you the tools on the means in order to improve productivity. One of the things I've been doing here in Florida is visiting some partners. And uh, the first thing I tell them is, do you know upstreams? Do you know multi-dev? It's like, yeah, yeah, I know everything. And Valentina knows knows about this. Like, yeah, you know Astros, but are you using it in this way? Do you know that you know you have multi-site, but you can actually take it to the next level? Use containers for all your sites, or for example, use multi-dev in order to uh, improve your CI/CD. Things like that, having like environments that spin up like magic when you are working in a new branch, so all your developers can have their own environment, and maybe even customize your own your own uh, CI/CD using that without having to have extra environments or extra servers, etc., etc. right? Uh, so if you are curious, just come and, and, and ask me and I can show you more about the platform because today we will focus on, on the front-end part, front-end applications. Yeah, it's my book. I'm not going to ask the same question as, uh, as Alex, <laughs> because I think that only two people in, in the room now uh, who, uh, Iberus. Okay, uh, we pronounce uh, in Spain is Iberus, uh, but you can pronounce as, uh, as you like. I think that uh, uh, you pronounce something like Iberus or more or less, but um, this uh, is the name now of, uh, of our company. We are the, the one of the, of the first uh, Spanish IT, IT company in, uh, in growing. And uh, organic growing since uh, 2016. Uh, we started um, 2017 to no, to, sorry, 29 with less than uh, 1,000 employees. And now, in February 2023, we are more than 2,000. Um, and we are uh, we work with uh, several technologies, and we have several areas. Uh, we work with. Uh, more than 150 companies, international companies, in more than 30 countries. And uh, the question, or one of the first questions that I, I think that uh, anybody can ask uh, himself is, how we do, how we do, we do it? Okay, uh, but uh, how is this possible? Okay, um, we have a secret formula for this. And uh, this is our hyper specialization. Okay? Um, we have a um, personal way of understanding um, software development, and this is something that uh, we want to to transmit or to show to, to our clients or to our to our developers. Um, we have we are very focused on on people, people working working with us. And we have, uh, for example, our own university uh, inside the, the company, and we train all our teams and all our um, developers to to focus on uh, on be an, an excellent developers and to make uh, to make great uh, software uh, software pieces. Okay, um, we have a um, uh, turnover and reassignment rate. Um, very low for the for the industry. We are uh, low as 15 percent per year, and this is uh, something that uh, is great for for a company like us. And uh, this is that all in all in a group is that we call uh, our hybrid cultures. Okay. I'm talking about Drupal, not only about the the whole company, only only for Drupal. We have a CMS area. Uh, group area with more than 150 developers, more of the uh, are certificates um, in Wutakia or others. Uh, uh, sorry for the, <laughs> 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 but, but you don't have certification about <laughs> this. <laughs> okay, 
and uh, we have done uh, more than 300 uh, Drupal contributions to, to the community between modules or, uh, or, or issues or something like this. More than uh, 80 people subscribers on, on Drupalor. Uh, okay, I think we are uh, we have a great team and um, uh, we work every day to to be uh, to be better than this. With these numbers, I think that we are one of the biggest uh, Drupal companies in Spain, if not the bigger one. And uh, we work, uh, for example, uh, that I was telling you before. This is all of our team. This photo in the 2022 Drupal Camp Spain. As we were organizing it, and we were one of the of, of the bigger team, in, uh, the bigger team there. I thought it was a whole people of the Rupal Camp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, and we are we are responsible for some of the of the biggest projects in in Spain and and in Europe about uh, Drupal, uh, both for the public and the and the private sectors. We work for for all companies, okay. and uh, this year in 2023 we are launching our um, international uh, uh, our American uh, project, and we are uh, trying to achieve um, a partnership here in uh, with all the companies here in the United States and also in Latin America. So we are we are working hard to do this. With our, with my mates, Marcos and Sandal, that are here, that are present here. Okay. So, uh, One thing that you didn't mention is uh, if you want to visit Europe, and Spain is a good opportunity in September. It's going to be in September, right? Drupal Camp yeah. this year. We have a Drupal Camp in Spain in September. At the, I, I think that's it at the end of, the, of September in Seville. It's, it's a beautiful the, city. A beautiful city, one of the most beautiful cities in Spain, with the permission of Zaragoza, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Spain last year, in August. Oh, and you like it? Yeah, oh. I went to Seville too. Okay. So I encourage you to, I welcome you to, to come to Spain, to the Rupert Camp, and try to find what it is. What is it? I don't know why you guys started to read like five years ago, and it's like every yeah. year there. It's a, it's a Spanish developer, and uh, every Drupal camp, he's, uh, he put the same clothes, and he, he's in the, in the middle of the photo, always. So come to Spain and find Wally. <laughs> okay, so, um, sorry, did you finish? No, no, go, go, yes. So, um, before we start and we jump into the, you know, uh, having our hands dirty, um, I think it's, it's important to to know what's the problem to solve. And this is where, as well, I love having Iberus, or Iberus, <laughs> with us, because they, they are a big company, they have the, the means, they have the infrastructure to do this on their own, and we also have the center where we have the, the whole platform of Pantheon helping on that, so we can compare both, right? So let, let's, let me tell you a story, um, which is uh, Dave, who is someone from the UK. Uh, he's a Drupal uh, WordPress developer, could be this guy here. <laughs> it's normally easy, right? With new features, <laughs> books, and whatnots in the backlog. Um, he has a common stack with, uh, with Docker. He uses Git, um, and he uses a deployed binary. So I think this is a familiar uh, setup for everyone, right? Okay, so um, Dave is, uh, is working uh, with a Drupal or WordPress project in a traditional way, let's say, and uh, he's uh, very comfortable uh, with this. And um, but now uh, he he has to work in in other side, and uh, for different circumstances, she she has to start to work with React, React GAs, for example, and um, he can reuse uh, existing stack for the new side backend. Uh, for the new side, the the backend is the same. A stack that he is uh, working with, he don't have uh, any problem with it. But now he need uh, to to uh, start with uh, extra effort. He need a plus of extra effort. Uh, uh, apart to learn new skills, he has to worry about uh, extra infrastructure. He has to worry about connecting backend and frontend and uh, reproducing the, this new environment in his uh, in his laptop. Okay. So um, 
anyone uh, here has this uh, has had this problem? Yeah. Yeah. So you know uh, what are uh, what are we talking about? So, so it looks like like a myth, right? Suddenly you have to worry about new problems, new technology, new infrastructure. Um, but we need to keep an eye as well on why we are doing this, right? I'm not going to go on the full reasons on why we are going, doing the couple. There was a previous session where John went on, on actually explaining why. Why it's good and why sometimes it's not a good idea. But there are some points which I think are important, like, uh, for example, cross-collaboration. I've worked on some decoupled projects, some semi-decoupled as well. And what I found is cross-collaboration between teams improves dramatically. The whole idea of We've been sold for many years to it when it came, I think it was Drupal 7, right? And the idea was like, yeah, suddenly the front-end developers don't have to know anything about Drupal backend. And the backend, it can focus on there. That was a lie, right? Because at the end to it, it, it has a lot of Drupalisms in the middle, so you need a front-end guy who knows, who knows Drupal as well. This is changing with, uh, with the couple. And it doesn't matter if you are using semi-decoupled or fully decoupled, you can have actually a team uh, that this agnostic, like uh, is agnostic, is specialized on its technology. For example, in a semi decoupled, which could be like more more tricky if you build it in a way that the front end is isolated. With, uh, for example, with PDB, the progressive decoupled blocks, you can have a team ex working exclusively on on this small uh, block. For example, uh, on Angular, on Next.js, or React, or whatever. And the backend team just sending the sending the JSON information. So the the, the promise is working, and I've seen it working. So it's it's um, it's really cool. Um, so developers as well, it improves your, your flow because you have to worry less. Like it's much easier to go to production. You don't have a monolith, right? And again, because you don't have a monolith, you don't have to go with a big bank. Like if you have small changes on the front end, you can go on your own. If you are a solo developer, it's nice. And if you if you work in a big team. It's much easier to uh, plan for for those features to go to production. You don't have to agree with so many teams on the back and on the front end, etc. Okay. So uh, before going to uh, to start uh, talking about the, the product itself, um, we are uh, going to to tell you uh, the last part of this story about the real use case that uh, we have been working on. Uh, we have a, a complex website for a, for a client. That, uh, this website uh, we built uh, in Drupal 7 some years ago. And we uh, upgrade or we uh, moved to Drupal 8 at the beginning of the 2016, more or less, in the early days of, of Drupal 8. And um, we decided to create a new, um, a new entity to uh, to hold the content inside the uh, inside the content types. Um, uh, instead of using uh, paragraphs or like your builder doesn't exist in this day, we, we create a, a custom entity. It works fine, uh, or it has been working fine, or it continues working fine today. But uh, in the long term, it has uh, several problems. Uh, related to um, uh, to maintain maintainability and upgradability of the of this tool, because uh, it's not a, um, a country module; it's a it's a custom entity, uh, as I said, and all all work is, uh, must be done uh, in house. So, um, but uh, this also has uh, some drawbacks that. Um, we cannot do uh, all that we need with this, uh, with this good, uh, custom entity, and uh, we need uh, some requirements from business and, um, and marketing areas uh, about creating different uh, structures, different layouts in the, in the content. So we decided to create a new parallel website with Drupal 9 and uh, Next.js in the, in the front, and a new decoupled website. And, uh, with all the, the stuff that we need, or that we have been uh, so before. And uh, now we have two different uh, websites uh, to serve the same domain. We have created some um, um, rules in, with Apache uh, Proxy Pass. It's a, it's a small uh, utility inside the, the server. And this allows us to define which uh, 
which instance is serving one URL and which uh, instance is serving the other. So it's, uh, this is, that's, uh, has been working in, in, this, uh, in this way. Um, now we are working with, uh, with Pantheon to move all of this because this is in, in, a, in our own uh, da data center. We are working with Pantheon to move this uh, complex website to, to Pantheon, to the Pantheon infrastructure. The Drupal 8 uh, will be moved to a normal, let's say, to a normal uh, Pantheon uh, website. And uh, the, the couple with Drupal 9 will be moved to the same solution that we are going to show uh, in the next, uh, the next minute. Okay. And uh, we have to, to work with, uh, do, uh, with Pantheon engineers to uh, match this URL with, uh, for, from one to other. Because we have to migrate all Drupal 8 site to the new decouple site, but it's, uh, it's a slow process. So we have to, to worry in several stages. Okay. So, uh, this is a, a use case that uh, we want to, to show that uh, because it's using the same uh, product or the same uh, solution that we are that we are talking or we have so how it's working. I think one of the interesting things is that even a big company and as you have seen, and they have a huge team, including DevOps, right? So they are able to have their own infrastructure. And that means complexity as well. So for yeah. a normal day company, it's difficult to, to have this, like have a setup where you have your backend, your frontend, and then manage all the infrastructure. And even for a big company. Yeah, uh, uh, we, can do, we can do this, uh, this uh, infrastructure because uh, we have a DevOps team uh, in our company. And I have been sit, uh, <coughs> sit down with the, with the DevOps engineer uh, front to front. And, uh, I need this. Is it possible? No, it's possible. You have to do this. So it's, uh, it's how they do it. And yeah, and a project like this can take weeks, that can take months, right? So what I'm going to show you is like in, in less than these two sessions, we are going to be able to build uh, the front end sites. So now is where I'm going to show you some, some magic, if you want. Uh, you will see how the platform works. And if you like what you see, then we can we can register you in the platform. I promise that your emails will go away. I'm not take, I'm not keeping anything. Although here is not like California or Europe, right? I can do whatever I want with the emails, right? But I promise I won't do anything. Um, so let's let's start with with this. Let's let me show you a little bit of if I know how to. There you go. Take this away. So you said most of you that you already know Pantheon. Have you seen the dashboard? Are you familiar with, with this? Um, this is a new one if you haven't come to the platform for a few months. I'm going to mirror this because I think it's going to be easier for me uh, if I know how to mirror this. Uh, anyone know how to mirror this? <laughs> Um, do, 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 do. Well, it doesn't matter. I will keep looking at the, at the other screen. So, um, again, this is the new, um, the new dashboard. You will notice you have the CMS sites. It's, uh, again, if you are familiar with Pantheon, nothing new here. Something that you won't see out of the box is these front-end sites. For this, you will need to request us to give you access. On this case, I will give you straight away access. You will keep, uh, don't build something important on this because it can go away in a week, in a month, at some point, it's just for playing, right? But I can see well that one of the things I want to mirror is because I'm losing my, my sight. So let's, let me show you how we, see, how we see this. What we're going to do today is, first we are going to build uh, a Drupal. You don't necessarily need to do this. But the reason I'm doing this, or we are going to do it this way, is because this is going to use some contributed modules that we have in, in Pantheon that you can use um, on yourself. Like if you have a, an existing Drupal site, you can uh, go to Drupal. There are, like, uh, it's a Drupal Pantheon, Drupal for the Couple Kit, uh, React, yeah, something like that. I, I will give you the, the links if you're interested. 
Uh, but this will require that you have to install modules, configure, etc., etc. Doing these steps, you will see how it is. It is like you just spin up um, this distribution. Uh, again, you are probably familiar with uh, how it works in Pantheon. It's just uh, asking you some basics information, right? If you want in the European Union, etc., etc. Again, we will go through this. And what is new as well is this part here where you can spin up a new site, a new front-end site, on Next.js, Gatsby. At the moment, these are the two supported. If you want WordPress, it will have to, you have two options. You have Gatsby and Next.js. Drupal at the moment is only Next.js. It doesn't mean that something that you want to work on. Like if you want to put Gatsby and Drupal together in the platform, you probably you can, but at the moment it's not yet supported, okay? Um, I won't go through this step. We will, go it, we will do it together uh, in a few minutes. And let me show you how this looks like. Again, if you know Pantheon, this dashboard is familiar. You have uh, all the information, the status, you have the databases, etc., etc. You have all the environments. Uh, I was talking about multi-dev. If you don't like this flow, you can actually customize the flow. For example, building, spinning up a new developer environment, which can be your new developer, right? And ignoring this flow if you want. Um, and the interesting thing is the front-end dashboard, which looks a little bit different, but it's what you will expect. Like, you don't have database, you don't have things that you expect on, on a CMS. And, and here you will see things like information about your build. For example, these uh, settings here. Like I was saying, if you want to bring your Gatsby for Drupal, <coughs> you could tweak this in order to, to achieve that, right? Or if you want to do things like uh, set up your environment variables, you don't have to go as a site into the server and you know, you just come here. Quite similar to how you expect Netlify to work. From here, you can actually change as well the CMS to which this is connected, right? And even change the environment to which this is pointing to. And the part which to me is more exciting is the part where we can trigger the builds. I will show you during the demo, during the, not the demo, during the next part, that when we, we are going to create a pull request, we will push it to the environment, and we are going to see how this is going to appear as a new, as a new deployment here. But the interesting thing is that again, this is using multi-dev, and this is going to give you out of the box a new environment where you can test your whatever changes you are doing, right? Uh, and you could use this environment to, say, for example, give it to your stakeholders, to your customer, test your changes there. And once you are happy, you merge it, and the environment will disappear from here. This is what I was saying. Like in multi-dev on the CMS, you can as well do this. But here you have it out of the box, which I think is pretty nice. Um, what else? I want to grab a build now. Uh, you have the build logs in case something goes wrong. And oh, yeah, let me show you as well. Like this is. You're maybe familiar with this. This is the Umami distribution. I like using this because it contains a lot of content. So when you are working on a demo, or when you are working on something like this, it takes um, a lot of work out of your shoulders. Um, let me go to content. And this is how it looks the, the next yes, the default one. Right? If I talked before about the, the couple kit. If you install it, be it in Pantheon, or if you take it, because again, it's, it's open source, it will look something like this. And this content here, it comes out of the out of the box. Uh, out of the box, I mean in, oh, what happened? Oh, why has to happen during a demo? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a live demo. Yes. I think it's because this has been a thing. Uh, and the container the needs to the first time, right? wake up. <laughs> Hey, what happened? Mm -hmm. I can't see any viruses. Actually, I'm going to have viruses. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why is not opening the content part? Okay, everything looks fine. Looks like content is broken. Okay. No, no, no. So one of the things I didn't mention is uh, everyone knows Docker, right? 
we built containers before Docker was Docker. So it's been like 10 years ago, 11 years ago, we have really smart guys in the company like David Strauss, who is one of the founders, um, some of you know him, and they built this, this amazing technology that again is like 10 years old. The new iteration, the new infrastructure is coming, and it's going to look something like this, like um, automatic deployments with automatic um, environments spin up, etc., etc. But what was happening here is probably that I wasn't using this for maybe a day, and then the container goes down, um, and it goes to sleep, right? The moment you try to open it again, because this is not a production um, container, it will take you know, uh, it will take the ping and it will try to spin it up. The new infrastructure is amazing because it goes to sleep, you ping it, and it's so fast that you don't see the servers anymore. It just spin ups like that, and in, in milliseconds you see the thing um, or just working. Yes, like magic. Um, the reason I'm coming here is because I want to show you one of the things that, again, is contributed um, uh, for the community. One of the things that we have to do when you know when we go to the company sometimes rebuild things like rebuild one of the things we have to rebuild is the preview functionality and it doesn't matter if it's a big team a small team if they are used to work with Drupal the first thing they are going to ask you yeah this next year looks amazing how do I preview my content right so some people like Brian Perrin uh, in our company and they've been actually working on that problem um, is this the right content? So we, what we have is a contributed module. Again, it's everything prepared on the on this on this container when you spin it up in Panther. Um, what it does is I will go to, for example, edit. Uh, let's say that I want this text in bold, for example, and this text as well, um, because I am uh, I'm gonna say that I did it myself. And it's like yeah, great. Um, I'm gonna save the content, but this is going. To production, I don't like, you know, I want to preview, I want to see how, how this looks like. This is the uh, reason we built uh, this preview. At the moment, you will, I only have the, the production one, but here, for example, you could even have a, a local a local container or even two or three different servers. And you, you may ask me why having two different servers. This is an interesting use case where you can have one Drupal backend sending information to different sites. So you could have a multi-site of um, next yes, where the container only lives in one in one Drupal site. So let's click on preview. Uh, let's remember this was the content before. There is no um, bold. There is nothing here. And when I and the title is like this. So yeah, as you can see, the new title has changed. Actually, I make a, made a mistake here, so it's good that I'm doing the preview, and you can see the rest of the changes. Again, contributed code is open source. You can uh, use it um, for your own websites, or you can just come to Pantheon and use it straight away. What else? I think that's pretty much about the demo. So I'm going to create a new site. I will click on Drupal for frontend. Mike, you didn't miss a lot. Like, yes, go to sites and create a new site. I'm gonna spin up Drupal frontend. Okay, and I will call it Florida Drupal Campus. Again, make sure that you are on the right dashboard, otherwise um, it won't spin at the right the right Drupal, the right distribution, and I will spin it up in whatever. Australia, Canada, we'll select the United States. Someone, my boss probably will get a bill, but that's fine. Just <laughs> click that you agree. And now we have to wait. So this, what this is going to do is going to spin up, put all the, it will spin up the container, and it will put all the code on on that container. And starting Drupal inside the container. Yeah. The next step, because this is going to be just the code, right? It's not going to be installed. The next step will have to be, you know, let's let's install it. Oh. And this is where 
the, the new infrastructure is different in terms of it didn't ask me for anything in terms of GitHub. It just it did it, right? Because this is using like what I was saying, 10 years old technology, which is pretty amazing, but this is still 10 years old. And it's using um, some infrastructure around Git, which creates the repositories for you. And you have the you will just have to go to uh, the Git in Pantheon and, and take the code from there. The new infrastructure it will ask you for your GitHub account. And you will be able to work on it's GitHub at the moment. At some point, it will be as well Bitbucket and the rest of the repositories out there. How many of you are doing the Copilot? Just out of curiosity. Have you worked on any? Do you have any customers or do you already have? We're in the process of migrating away from the Copilot right now. Away from the Copilot. Yeah. <laughs> We'll have any complexity, yeah. too much complexity. Right. They weren't able to, uh, they didn't have the uh, skill set to manage oh. both, both technologies. Mm -hmm. Complex complexity on the application level or complexity on the infrastructure or, or everywhere? Both. both. Okay. If something like this will improve that part where complexity goes away, at least on the infrastructure, will make a change on, on that? It would make a big deal, you know. This is a, this is a federal website, which unfortunately we can't it doesn't have a FedRAMP certification. Mm -hmm. So so we can't. So we have to host this directly on AWS. But right. the current, like, if you were to look at the diagram of all like the, like the current setup of the of the DevOps infrastructure, it's like this octopus maze of everything, you know. And, and so they're trying to get away from away from that and obviously simplify the application too. Right. Yeah, it's one of the problems in the couple. Yeah. So you're not against it, it's just not working for that. I mean, I'm not against the couple, but I like I personally I, I personally have like reserve I, I think a lot of people tend to go go to decouple because it's new and it's shiny, mm -hmm. but there needs to be a reason. You know, and there are valid reasons mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Yep. But I'm, I'm really excited to learn about this though because I, I've never used Next.js. I've used it in React, but I haven't used Next.js and I've never used it with Drupal, so I'm excited. Mm -hmm. But also clients are, are interested in the couple. What's that? The clients, uh, yeah. every day is more interested in the couple. Sure. Because uh, in, in our case, uh, now uh, I no, not well, but in this week, I, I'm working in a, in a proposal for a, for a new client, and the requirement for the client specifically say that uh, they need a, a backend for content, and they want to sell the content to several the front-end sites, including the, a website, including a mobile app, and they are not saying the, the, the work, the couple, like this, but they, the requirements are uh, using yeah, the this way to uh, so every day we are finding more more interest in, in the market because there are a lot of use cases like marketing sites simple sites which don't have user registration don't have a lot of complexity mm -hmm. you don't have to reinvent things like preview which is already there but that's fine but things like i don't know maybe they want layout builder and they want that means that you will have to do some stuff on the front end to play with the order, the blocks and everything, you start to have yeah. to invest a lot of time on those things, right? So getting the requirements right and getting the... For example, yeah. we, have a, we have developed a module that we want to contribute sooner uh, to preview a layout builder for the couples. That is the, is a work, is a work part of this. Not only preview the content, like the one that you have, mm -hmm. to preview layout builders. So nice. We are uh, finishing the the working phase, and someday it will be full country. How many of you are here? Okay. Have you yeah. spin up the new dashboard? Yeah. Any of you are stuck? Okay. So let's click on development side here. We will open the shiny new site, which we need to install now. I'm going to select English. I will choose the, you can choose the couple profile or the, the couple umami because I want to see content straight away in our front end. I'm going to choose the last one and use the uh, contributed content from the community. Okay. 
What I find with money is sometimes fails when it's important the translations for some reason. So if that happens, what we can do is we can come back to the dashboard, remove the database, we can just wipe it from here, and, and kick the process again. Yeah, but I don't know why. Because yeah. Sometimes. In our case, uh, we install the, this uh, distribution also in uh, in Spanish sometimes, uh, and we have this problem. With the translation. Right? Time. Uh, but mm. Mm. I, I don't know the reason. Mm. Would be good. Maybe there's a book there. If not, we should we should open one. So when you finish the the process, or when you if you have your own site and you install the the preview contributed module, you will have a message like this one. I don't mind about the secrets here because this site, I will remove it after this. Uh, but it's important that you note these numbers, these, um, these passwords, if you want to use the preview. Right? Because um, I will show you after this when you will have to go to the settings in the module and it will ask you for, for these settings. And you will never see those again except for... And you will never see this again, so make sure that you copy them. I mean, you can remove the module and install it again, and you will have again, but yeah. No need if you take it out of it. Oh, Ajax error. Why, why does this have to in live demos? The Ajax error is part of the connectivity. Like it's, My God. It's <laughs> I've never seen this one. Yeah. Like, I've done this a hundred times, maybe. The, the internet error is Now, the question is, did it break? Come on. Yes, Ajax, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's um see my professional ah, my way. We'll use Alex and a very strong password like one two three four. Whoop. By the way, be careful with the sites that you spin up and you have very weak passwords because there are bots constantly hitting the infrastructure and trying to find you know sites like this one. So I've seen cases where people spin up a site, they forget about this, even they leave it with uninstalled, and suddenly someone takes over that site. Oh. It's, it's not a big issue, like you just wipe it and that's it, right? But uh, well, uh, it uh, continue. Oh, come on, yes, I know it's about password. Leave me alone. <laughs> Take a break. We leave Drupal installing, and after that, we can spin up a front end and we'll see how. And continue with the, with the rest of the. Yeah, with yeah. the rest of the session. Yeah, okay, yes. oh. It's We're Tacos time, which I'm very excited as well. Yeah, <laughs> much is, much is amazing here. Did you, did you all finish the um, install? Did, yeah. you, did you get to this, this screen? Mm -hmm. It failed for me, so in lunch I had to, exactly what I said, I had to come back here, wipe it, and kick in the, the process again. Um, I don't know, something happened, and it was showing the, the blank, blank page, right? Everything looks, it looks like it's fine now. So, what I'm going to do now is, let's go to the dashboard again. We're going to need the name of the backend that we have created. In my case, it goes probably the Drupal camp. If you don't remember, you just go to the website and you have the environment here. And then after that, the name that you gave to your site. And then the rest, Pantheon site.io. 
So I'm going to go, go back to the dashboard, make sure again that you are on the right workspace, the decoupled workshop in this case. I will go again to sites, I will go again to create a new site, but this time I'm going to create a front-end site, which is what, what we call in, in Pantheon, um, the way we call a, a decoupled application in Pantheon. And I will select next yes with Drupal. Did we do this? Sorry? Did we do this? No, this is new. So we, we have already built the backend. Right? We have a Drupal site. Now we need a front end. So I'm going to create a Next.js application, which I'm going to connect as well to, uh, to the backend. We do Next.js and Drupal. Yes. So you go to sites. You go to create a new site, we go to front end site, next year is Drupal. And then you will have, on my case, I'm already signed for, for GitHub. It will ask for, for your permissions. It asks you for a lot of permissions because what this is going to do is it will create a repository for you. I will select my account. Um, so do we have to create a uh, repository in GitHub first? No, it will it will do that for you. That's why that's the reason it's asking for permissions, okay. right? It will authenticate on Pantheon against uh, GitHub. Yeah. You can so make first this. time ask you for the proper permissions, but after that, if the the tool do it automatically. Um, we go back again, like GitHub. Select the repository. Go. Okay. And then we select Florida the program. Does the repository name like matter? No. Uh, the repository name it does it only matters for for you, you know? Whatever name you want to use. But will this just be like next to yes, and then I the triple? This will put the code, the next year's code in that repository. So this will be your main next year's repository. Okay. And what matters is here. Like select your CMS backend. This will be the yeah. backend, the Drupal site that we have created, right? Yeah, I'm just wondering if like, you were going to have like two separate repositories if you were working entirely up at GitHub. Yes. Yes, actually, that's the case because. Uh, if you go to the Drupal site in here, if you go to oh, in here, it will show you the Git repository for your Drupal backend, right? For, for your Drupal code, and in here it will create another repository for your next year. So both of them will live on, on isolation. So I'm going to select the CMS backend. I will select which environment I want to take the content from. We only have uh, dev. In here, but it could be production, it could be whatever you want. And in the settings here, I can customize the commands in case I, maybe I don't want to use uh, actually Next.js. I want to do, you, you can customize this here or you can customize that later. And the environment variables, uh, again, the same. So I will hit next. And that should be it in a few minutes. We should have a um, front end site or a decoupled application built on Next.js yes, connected to Umami, which is I have here, and it should display the content straight away. I think some of you were not on the session, on the previous session, is that possible? So this is a working session, right? So we started on the previous one, explaining a little bit what we are doing in terms of uh, building a web building a front-end site and a back-end site, right? Drupal and Next.js, and connecting them. Um, maybe what, if you want, you can give me your, your email. If you have a, a Pantheon account, mm -hmm. I can give you access to this uh, dashboard, to this workshop, okay. and, and you can play with, with the, the concept with the tool. Okay? okay. So what I understand so far is that these, uh, uh, Pantheon is giving us a platform where we can 
using their GUI tool, we are linking the two repositories. Mm -hmm. Right, one is the Next.js repository, mm -hmm. one is a Drupal repository. Mm -hmm. Right, and using the the GUI tool that you just showed me. Yes. Right, it is linking the two together and building a site on yeah. its own, or building a new repo on its own, or building a new yes. service instance on its own. All of that. All of that. Yeah. Really using a UI UI tool. Yeah. It's, I see this is a GUI tool, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I will recommend you to watch the, the previous part because I go through all, all that, right? So okay. I will show you how to spin at the backend, Drupal. I show mm -hmm. you how to spin at the, the front end. I give you a short introduction on the on the dashboard. If you know Pantheon, if you've mm -hmm. used this in the past, I use it. Okay, you will be familiar to this, but mm -hmm. you can just create an account on Pantheon.io mm -hmm. and you can have access to all of this. Because mm -hmm. um, one of the things I was explaining in the first part is that we we work with containers, right? Before Docker existed, we created this technology using containers. Okay. And that's one of the reasons why we give for free uh, sandboxes, right? You can come to the platform, start mm -hmm. using it, and don't pay a penny. Because the magic about this is the moment you don't use your container, it goes down, mm -hmm. uh, it goes to sleep, and it doesn't cost Pantheon anything at all, right? Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. If you look at here, we already have a, a link to the repository that we have created. So I'm gonna I'm gonna click on this one while we wait for everything else to to finish. And this is what I was, say, uh, was saying before. Um, the code that we use uh, by default, the, the couple kit that we, we call. It's going to be in this repository. This is a, the repository that uh, Sarah, you were asking me for. What's the, the this is this is the code, right? Well, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is the one like, for the front end. If, if you had Drupal on GitHub too, you want to have different names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like because this is using the legacy infrastructure, we will use the the kit one here, and then you won't have this on GitHub, but you can do it in GitHub. Like normally, the way it happens is here you have the um, artifact mm -hmm. Pantheon, and then you have your own. GitHub or Bitbucket or whatever repository where you do, you keep your code clean. And then when you have to do the um, composition installs, the VMs, whatever, mm -hmm. you put that on the on the Panther repository. The same way you would do it yeah. in Akia or yeah, anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The new the new infrastructure is a little bit different because actually you already have the repository connected to Panther. And there are some advantages like when uh, it detects that there has been a pull request, for example, or a change or it will automatically get the the build, and it will show you the logs. It will show you uh, the information that you need, right? And one of the things I will show you is, which I think is super cool, is the temporary environment that creates. Right. So the moment you open a pull request here, it will make a new environment available with that code, and I will I will show you as well. It's, it takes like nothing to a few minutes to show. There you go. There you go. So this finished. Hopefully for you as well. And what we have now is a build, um, a production, a live build. It's on URL. I'm gonna open it because it's the first time it opened. It will take a little bit. Go no, fast. Images are still loading. And yeah, and there you go. We have created a next yes site, right? And we haven't written a single line of of code, or we haven't had to write anything on DevOps or any infrastructure, or so quite by yes. Uh, and work inside connected to uh, yes. to the backend. Yes. So if we go to the backend, we have all this content, which is. Straight away here, right? Which I so think if, is you, <coughs> if you change the content on the back end, does yeah. it automatically update yeah. or do you have to refresh? We like we are very open and on some things, right? And one of the things that we we are very open and and we think it should be done in this way, uh, for most of the use cases, is using server side rendering, mm -hmm. which allows you to let's say I want to change that content. I will go here, let's find the content. Give uh, the name of this, give it a go. So for most of the things that the editorial would need 
to change content, you won't need to change anything, like trigger a build. It can take a few minutes, or when the project starts to grow, it could take even longer than that, right? Mm. So what is going to happen, let's change it. I'm all the time doing the same. Uh, let's title for example and let's do something like this and I'm gonna save it straight away. Go. And hopefully this will detect the change and it will update that. Right? If you need to change something like uh, something which is in the code which is not the case for menus, the menus are as well coming from JSON but it could be the yeah something something on the on the I think on the land the landing page. I think this is in the code actually. This will need to trigger a new build. Uh, sorry, I wasn't clear on the previous session. Yeah. Uh, is that a SSR site? So a server side render? Well, yes. It, this is uh, like the content is coming from Drupal. It gets mm -hmm. cache and everything, right? Uh, but you don't have to be triggering any, any new builds or anything. Next year, this is working on, as an SSR application, right? Yes. Right. Yes, this is working on, on the container here. Okay. Right, and now what we have is we have two containers. We have two dashboards. One is for for the front end side for the next year's one, and here you have all the access to view the site, trigger a build, check the logs here. Maybe what you can do as well. What I was saying on the first session, you could modify uh, the commands here. Maybe to use Gatsby or maybe to use something else, Wait. some other framework. I don't want to keep interrupting you. So. It's okay if I make questions now. Yes, please. Sure. We are here for that. Okay. So if you decide to go static, you need to trigger a review after you update your data, or it's also going to If it's fully static and depending on your implementation, yes. Like uh, well, at the moment you modify something here, you will have to go back here, go overview, and then trigger a new build. Okay. But that's that's what we if we think like we are very opinionated. Like you shouldn't need to rebuild something when it's an editorial change, right? It's, yeah. it's very annoying, like, for someone to have to come back to the development team, it's like, yeah, if you make a change on, on my content, can you please trigger up a build? So yeah. it will be messing a lot with you, right? Thank you. Um, let's, let's make a change, for example, uh, <coughs> on any of the pages here. Did you, did you all get here, those who are following? Do you have your front-end side? Yeah. <laughs> I don't see you excited, it's really excited. Oh, it's yeah. but it's tacos. amazing, I mean. One of the tacos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go to the index, for example, and I'm gonna try let's make let's make a change on this landing page. For example, welcome to next yes, I'm gonna change it to something else. And I'm, I'm not going to download anything, I'm just going to go to GitHub. Welcome to. like that. Yes. And I'm going to create a new branch. So, pretty much what I'm doing is I'm emulating or simulating what I will be doing in my local environment, right? So, I have my code in my environment, in my local host. I'm making a change. I'm putting this code in a new pull request, in a new branch. Which is what I'm doing. Alex Moreno patch one is, is a new branch, and I'm pushing this to GitHub. And again, we haven't had to configure any CIs. We haven't had to configure anything on the infrastructure, but we actually have a CI pipeline working. So something is happening there. Build, clone, deploy. If we go back to the dashboard. Up here, there, but I'm gonna refresh. <coughs> there you go. We, we have something, something is happening here. So let's wait a few minutes. And you can, you can do this as well. Like, you can go to the, to the repository uh, again, just to remind you between all this data here, you should have the repository here on Git source. And it will link. It will go straight to the current version for that for that build status. So on this case, for example, it should bring me to yes to the commit with the code that I'm changing. Okay, which is as well on this pull request. Okay. Uh, 
Um, when I was on the first part, I was showing you uh, the preview. The preview is going to work here as well, but not out of the box. And that's where, if you remember, I was telling you this data is showing you when you finish the store. It's giving you um, a token, it's giving you a few things. You will have to come to the configuration and put that data in there in order to have the preview uh, working. So while we wait for this to finish, it's for some reason the, the preview module is not appearing in there, but I can come here and then I can configure from here. So this is something that I have to, I need, we have to open a book report here because when you come here to configuration or to a structure, it's not showing the, the module the preview model is an option here, right? Which it should be. But it's an easy, easy fix. So, um, from here, I will... I will modify these values to match my... Oh, interesting, this URL. Ah, okay, this is the pull request I'm opening. Okay. Let's add these values here. So we keep the endpoints. The secret. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't take note of the <laughs> of the values. Yeah, because you have to uh, to restart the installation. Right? Yeah, I didn't take the the, the values. <laughs> okay. I, I show you, and I have another person working. If you want to see the preview again, it's on the first part, so I won't show you that again. But I just want to show you how how to configure that, right? So for in a new brand new website, you just come to admin structure uh, DP previous site and this is where you, you will be able to add as many previous sites as you want. And this makes sense if you have a local host, for example, because in your local host you can as well use your uh, the preview functionality against your own local environment or against the Pantheon environment if you want. And once you have that, the other thing that you have to modify is the Uh, I think it's on. I have to modify the service. Just to add the values that I was talking before. So you have to come to the consumers. And Pantheon the couple is the one that you want. Right? Actually, this has changed. You don't have to modify anything here because it's already there. So when the installation is happening, this was not happening a few weeks ago. So when the installation is happening, actually it comes here straight away and it uh, creates this consumer for you. And this will be the consumer that will use the front-end application in order to come to Drupal and get the data in order to do the preview. Right? What you will need is, you will need the client ID here because if you want to use this on your uh, Pantheon environment, you will need to put these values in here, in the build. We'll go to the environment variables. We will add here the client secret and the client token. Previous secret and client ID. Okay? And these are the values that I was saying before. These values are coming from when back when we finished the installation on the first part of the of the session. Okay? So those aren't going into the example consumer? No, this one's the client ID. You will get this from here, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, client ID. So we we'll put it here. And the previous secret, because I didn't take note of this one, I cannot add this one, because this one is the one which is coming from when we finish the store. Okay. And but the, the previous sorry. secret needs to be added to the example consumer? The previous secret needs to be added, yeah, here. Oh, okay, that's in the Drupal side. Uh, on the Drupal side, you will need just the, go, 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 the previous configuration, this one. You will need these values. You need here the secret. The shared secret for the previous side. So this allows you to connect the front end with the, with the back end right, for that 
content exchange. And what we were waiting for is the, um, the pull request that I opened, which is finished. The build is there. And what I was saying before, like um, now we, we don't just have a live URL for our live environment or a production URL. We also have a URL with a working environment for our pull request. So if I open this this server here, what I should see, and I can, I'm going to remind you the change that we did, is this pull request. I was changing this to welcome to my new shiny demo. There you go. So I have a new environment. This change is very silly. It's just a little bit of content on the on something that is static, which is on the something that is um, on the code itself, right? But it could be something else. It could be removing them, whatever, right? A, a change in the code. And what we have is a we have an environment, we have a container which is showing us that change. And this is amazing. I mean. You can share this with your stakeholder. You can share this with, with uh, your team, your QA, whatever. They, they test it. Production side is still working. Production side has their own URL here, so you haven't merged anything in there. You can even compare both. Um, so this is like a, a stage or dev environment, right? But on demand. And then if I merge this change. Can you can you connect that PR to a different backend environment? So what you can do is you could come here to the yeah. So you could have an um, a dashboard or a new container for a different front end side, or you could come here and change the CMS to which your front end is connecting to, right? But that CMS is just for that PR or for the whole. Uh... So this 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 code in here yeah. is for your whole front end application. Oh, yeah, so let's say that I have my, my production live site and my yeah. production Drupal, mm -hmm. and I make a change to Drupal yeah. that requires a change to next. And yeah. I want both things. Uh, yeah. A dev environment of both yes. things connected to each other. Yeah. On the PR. So. Yeah, but on that case, what you have is um, here, you're pointing to the dev environment. So potentially you could have two different front-end applications, one which will be your stage or development application pointing to your development Drupal, and another one for your production. So keeping them isolated. Yeah, actually it wouldn't make sense, like having your production pointing to a backend that is on development, right? So yeah, yeah, good question. Um, I'm gonna merge this, and the <coughs> female environment should just go away. Okay. Go back here, and we'll see. See you there. Okay. We'll see that this one is should go away at some point, and then we can see as well that the main. Um, the main branch is triggering a bit. Okay, that's pretty much. That's pretty much. It's like um, one of the things I like about working in this way is because. Uh, if you see tutorials around Next.js, it's normally a tutorial that, yeah, let's build something in Next.js. After three or four pages, you are still building infrastructure. Your, your DDEV, your Lando, connect this and that. With this, you pretty much can jump in the code. Uh, in like, I don't know how long it took between launch and everything, 15, 20 minutes maybe, and you have a front-end application or a Next.js application connected to your backend, to, to Drupal. Now you, what you can do is um, you can go to your localhost, pull this code, use Lando. Lando should be here. Yes, there you go. So just you know, pulling this in your local and doing a Lando start, it will give you your, uh, your front-end, your Next.js application. And the next thing you can do is you can go to the environment here and connect 
connect with your uh, Pantheon environment, right? Or if you want to have it in your local, then you go to your Drupal site, you pull it as well, you build it as well with Docker, you will have two Dockers in your, in your local, um, and then change the, these variables accordingly. Instead of giving the Pantheon site.io, it will be something like my site.ddev.local or something like that. And then something to have in mind as well is the preview functionality if you want to use it. And you will have to adapt it as well here. So if you build it locally, you will have to put your credentials for uh, this environment here. Sorry, this one. No, actually, yes, the Drupal bucket. Or again, if you want to do it uh, locally, you will have to change that accordingly. How um, the, the couple starter kit, which is what we are using for for the code here. So if you want to, like, you don't necessarily need to use Pantheon for this. You could just grab this code and use it anywhere. But it's a lot more convenient, right? You don't have to just configure or mess about, um, even if you want to do it locally, it's good to get the code from here and start using locally, just do, doing a random stuff. And the other thing I want to share with you is the, the cobalt, maybe you, this one. This is what we are using for the, the cobalt, okay? The preview functionality. Again, you can just come here. It's an uh, open source contributed Drupal module. You can install it on your current sites. You could, um, you're free to, to play with this, to contribute back. But again, it's super easy to use it in Pantheon. So. And that's pretty much. Um, I was expecting the PR to go away. Uh, if, yeah, I guess it should go away at some point in this environment. Or it stays there for maybe for a few days. But that's everything I think I was planning to show you. Um, any questions? Any comments? You like it? You don't like it? You think you will use it? Can you run any, any node application that, uh, on that front end? So nothing stops you to come here and, and put whatever code you want you want to put in here, right? Um, there is like two, like you can do whatever you want to do. Actually, Pantheon has grown on WordPress a lot because in the past it was a Drupal company, but people will come here and they will start to use Joomla, they will start to use um, WordPress, they will start using um, Symfony or uh, PHP frameworks. And at some point, WordPress grow a lot. And some, we said, okay, now we have to maintain this, right? We have a lot of sites in the WordPress. And that's, you know, that's when the company gravitated to offering WordPress and Drupal as well. And in this case, it's the same. Like, no one stops you to, this is a node server. No one stops you to put anything in there, HTML if you want. Um, a different thing is that this is supported, right? At the moment, we support Gatsby and, and Next.js. And to me, this is the big advantage of using a managed service like this. If there is any problem with the server, you just can ping support and you know you have a, a team there to help you in case something goes weird or application goes not necessarily because something is down, right? Because it no, never goes down. <laughs> How does it set the node versions? Is it always like the LTS version or is that like something configurable? For the for the Drupal? For the front end part. Um, good question. I guess you can configure that from the packages, right? Um, no, because it, it, it'll, it'll uh, you, you can tell it like uh, that you should prefer like a node version, but the there will be something installed mm. specifically. So like, sorry, you meant the the node, the node version? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but that's a good question. Um, like, so you had something on like a specific older LTS version? Yeah. I don't, I'm just theorizing. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. And like some of the pains, pains. You know, uh -huh. People when come to Pantheon is like, I cannot change this, I cannot configure that. Uh, we are very opinionated on you should be using this version, which is the last one, it's more secure, and then you cannot change PHP version and things like that. You yeah. have some things around that you can play with that, right? Yeah. But it's very strict in terms of this is what you get. Yeah, and then you, you just know that if you're 
on an older version, like yeah. the USB version, you're gonna yeah. have to update something. Yeah, like because it's a, if you think it's as well a well a, a good way to harmonize things. If you have all all the platform with thousands of sites, which is the case, and it's a, it's one of the sites have different versions, it, it will be a mess to maintain that, right? It will yeah. be really difficult to to keep everything stable, everything secure. Um, so we kind of forced you have to use this version which are stable, etc. Et so like, is, it, is it fantastic to keep up with like the latest LTS, yes. whatever it is? Yeah. And obviously when there is some changes on the platform, you will get some notices and yeah. Okay. Did you all finish the you managed to install the site? Yeah, I think you managed you, you got the content. A little lost in the preview setup, like where the Yeah, go. so the preview, what we can do is uh, go to the uh, here, the copper preview. Yeah. So that's how you uh, Yeah, and here is everything everything is documented, right? Like uh, now we get to the structure, preview site. If you want, uh, give it a go now if you want. Try to try to follow. Because actually this is one of the tricky parts. I mean, it's easy, right? But because the whole process is so easy, it's just click, 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 you know? Suddenly you have to hear something. Yeah, I say tricky, but it's the trickiest on the whole, on the whole flow. And again, you could get all the... Um, in order to connect front end and back end, the code that we have is contributed, right? So you you could get your existing site and just install the modules that you need in order to do that uh, that part. So you're not restricted to use Pantheon. Which is this one. Is, is this using the next the next module from chapter three or no? No, we've been in discussions on uh, and actually, chapter three, I think they are trying it, they are testing it. Um, but no, this is a kind of um, own version of Pantheon. Yeah. And I think there was some decision in terms of shall, shall we support this part instead of the, the, this, this code from these guys from chapter three instead of this one. And because the, the engineering team, they wanted to keep it more agnostic, you know, not. Because at the end we all have opinions, and chapter three have their own opinions as well, and we should. But that would make things more difficult in terms of maintaining for a platform. So we keep up a lean version, let's say, which is easier in terms of um, you know maintain as well and make sure that the platform works well. On so what you can do from here is you could get the chapter three code. Um, it's called Drupal Next, right? Yeah. And, and install it here again. Chapter three is testing uh, this thing here, so as far as I know, it's working. And in the future, short future, we should get a lot more frameworks in here. So when you come to create a new site, the official ones, the supported ones are these ones. Um, I don't remember, there was one that has been a lot of conversation that is coming soon. But again, no one, is, no one stops you from doing this. I think for the for your own code. Or just create a repository and remove everything and put your own code in here. I will be interested, like if you try a new framework, and I will be very interested on on knowing your experience. If it was easy, if it was painful, and anything that you can tell me too. And do you have? I probably, probably said this on the previous uh, part that it wasn't here either. But uh, do you have to pay for both kind of? Uh, Pricing, I don't know. I think you you pay for for. Uh, I don't. I don't want to say something that I don't know. <laughs> the only thing I know is that uh, the same for all the Pantheon products, because we use containers and what it means in terms of taking everything down. We give a lot of things for free because it costs relatively little money. You spend on the site, and if you don't use it, it goes away, right? Um, now the next step when you want to go to production, that's where you will need to take your credit card probably. Um, but I don't want to. If you're interested, just you know, register and I can put you in quota as well if you want with uh, the sales teams. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.